Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I am going to introduce you some of the very important constructs used in very low hardware description language. So, we are going to take some digital circuits as an example and we are going to see how we can specify the behavior of those circuits in English as well as in very low code. So, let's get started. So, this is our first digital circuit we have taken here and now let's see how we can specify the behavior of this circuit in English. So, if you see in English, this is how we can specify it. If x equal to 1, then our output of the multiplexer is nothing but y or z. Else, if x equal to 0, then our output of the multiplexer is nothing but y and z. Now, let's see how we can specify the behavior of this circuit in very low form. So, here we are using the procedural block to specify the behavior of this circuit. So, first point I would like to mention is this example is pure combinational logic. So, the behavior of this combinational logic circuit we are specifying using the procedural block here. So, here you can see that in always block we have used x, y and z three signals as part of the sensitivity list and the behavior of this circuit is specified as below. If x equal to 1 then our foo will be y or z else our foo will be y and z. So the important point here is this foo can change when any of the x, y or z signal value changes. So the code must be written whenever any of these changes. So as per the very low procedural assignments, whenever there is a change in the sensitivity list, the always block is going to be executed. So this is very simple to specify the behavior of this combinational logic. But in many VLSI interviews, there are frequently asked questions on this construct, where they will give you one always block and in that always block, they will put one signal, suppose A and here they will be using some statements for example b equal to c c equal to b and here they will basically ask you if there is any issue with this particular code and many students at fresher level might get confused to identify if there is any issue with this code or not so we have to always remember that all the signals present in the statements of this always block should be part of the sensitivity list. Otherwise, if any of the signals is not part of the sensitivity list, then this always block is not going to execute whenever there is a change in that particular signal. And hence, our digital hardware which is realized out of this always block is not going to work as expected. So, this is one important point to remember here and always be very careful about the sensitivity list of always block. Now, there is one alternative coding style as well to specify the combinational logic in very low. And here again we are going to take the same example and we are going to specify the behavior of this logic using the alternative coding style. So, in very low, it has a short and way to capture the combinational logic which is called continuous assignment. So, using the continuous assignment, we can model or specify the behavior of digital circuit in very low. So, this is the continuous assignment here. So, continuous assignment always starts with the assign keyword and this is the output which is going to get some values and based on the selection line of this multiplexer, if the selection line is 1, then our foo will get the value y or z, else if our x is 0, our foo will get the value y and z. So, this is the alternative way of specifying the combinational logic in very low using the continuous assignment. So, here important thing to remember is, LHS re-evaluated whenever anything in RHS changes. So, whenever there is any changes in any signals which are present in the RHS part of the assignment statement, the LHS is going to be re-evaluated. So, if you see here, whenever there is a change in X, Y or Z, any of these three signals, 
our Assami statement is again going to re-evaluate. So, if you see here, the meaning of this assigned statement is something like this. So, if we have this as an example, then the meaning of this continuous assignment statement is if a equal to 1, then f is going to take the value of b, else f is going to take the value of c. So, the first value, which is b, is corresponding to the true condition of the variable a. And the second value, which is c, is corresponding to the false value of the variable a. Now, let's see how we can specify or model the sequential logic. And here, we are going to take an example of flip-flop. So, first, let's understand how we can specify the behavior of this flip-flop in English. So, the behavior of this flip-flop is for any positive edge of the clock, Q changes to become equal to D. So, at every positive edge of this clock, this Q is going to change its value equal to D. This is the behavior of this flip-flop in English. Now, let's see how we can define or specify this behavior in very well. So, in very long, this is how we can specify the behavior of this flip-flop. Always at positive edge of the clock, Q will be assigned the value of D. So, important point to note here is to specify the sequential logics and in this case specific to the flip-flop, we have to use the edge sensitive signals in the sensitivity list of this always block, which will basically get realized into the flip-flop during the synthesis. So, as we discussed, the small bracket is nothing but it is called a sensitivity list and it describes when execution triggers. So, the execution of this always block triggers whenever there is a change in the signal of the sensitivity list. So, here the clock signal is basically specified as an positive edge sensitive clock. So, whenever there is a positive as happens on the clock signal, this block is going to be executed. Now, let's combine the both logic circuits which we discussed so far, which are combinational and sequential logics and specify the behavior of this combined logic in very low as well. So, this is the combined module which specify the behavior of this complete circuit. So, now we are considering this full circuit as a module and we are giving a name to this module as a flip-flop and here we have the port names which are clock, x, y, z and q. And now we are going to specify the direction of all these ports. So here the x, y, z and clock are basically input ports. The q is output port. And here the q is basically a registered output, which is basically output from this flip flow. So here we are going to define the output q as a registered data type. And here we also have an internal wire signal. So, here we have declared as a wire. Now, first here we are going to basically specify the behavior of this combinational logic. So, as we discussed here, by using the continuous assignments, we are going to specify the behavior of this logic. And the behavior of this logic we can specify as assign D. This D is nothing but one internal variable, which is wire type. So, whenever X is high, our D is going to be Y or Z else it is going to be y and z. So, this is the behavior of this combinational part of this complete module. Now, here we also have this another flip-flop setting. So, here we have to model this flip-flop behavior also. So, to model the flip-flop behavior, we can use the always construct here and here always at positive edge of the clock begin q equal to d. So, this is the sequential part modeling and here we have the combinational part modeling. So, if you see this combined module have two parts, sequential part and combinational part and we have modeled both of the parts in this top level module. So, I hope the modeling of this complete digital circuit is clear using the different very low constructs. Now, as discussed, let's have a look on the different parts of the very low module. So, here we have the module name, then we have the connected ports, which are the ports of this module and then we have the port declaration. So, here the input and output, which are the ports and then we have the local variable y here and this is the port segment. This is basically the port which is used to specify the combinational part of the module and then we have the port segment, which is sequential port segment and this is the sequential part of our 
top level module. So, as discussed so far, there are basically three coding styles in Verilog SDL. The first is always blow. So here to model the free flops, we are going to basically use the procedural always block where the sensitivity list is going to contain the edge triggered signals. So this is the first coding style which is basically used to code the sequential logic or the flip-flops. The second coding style is to basically specify or to model the combinational logic. So here we can use the always at the rate and the signals which are going to be part of the sensitivity list are going to be level sensitive. So this is the very important point to model the combinational logics we are going to use the level sensitive signals in the sensitivity list of always block and to model the sequential logics we are going to use the edge sensitive signals in the sensitivity list of the always block. So here again in very low 2001 we can basically use the star as part of the sensitivity list. So if we are going to use star as the sensitivity list, then by default all the signals which are present in the always block statements. So if we have the so 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 we have the always block at the rate start and here suppose there are some statements. So all the signals which are part of these statements are by default or part of this sensitivity list. So in very 2001 we can use a star as part of the sensitivity list to model the combinational logic. Now, the third coding style in very long is by using the assign statements, which are continuous assignment statements. So, this coding style is also used to model the combinational logic, which are specified as structural. So, if a combinational circuit is specified by its behavior, we can basically use the always block to specify or to model the digital logic. Else, if the structural behavior is given or if some boolean equations are given, we can use the continuous assignment type of coding style to model the combinational logic. So friends, I hope the three important coding styles which are used in Verilog SQL are very much clear to you. If you have any doubts, please write in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you will get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you very much.